Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times and get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast. I am Tony Castellanova from Disney by the Numbers, and I have a great surprise for you all this week. We have a great co-host, Al John, from, gosh, uh, WDW Tiki, uh, 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 Jedi Mouseketeer. Uh, what Sorcerer else? Radio, Sorcerer yeah. Sorcerer Radio. Uh, he helps his wife uh, uh, dining at Disney, Kristen. He's got a whole bunch of podcasts and websites going on. So, yeah, uh, not always simultaneously. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's going to be uh, at the monorail call this weekend. So if you want to come out and meet uh, Al John uh, from Social Radio, please come out and do so. And we're going to have such a good time, Tony. Thanks for inviting us and looking forward to making the the pilgrimage out to the holidays yeah. for the Walt Disney World Resort. And once again, hanging out with all the great Disney Parks podcast fans. Yeah, sounds like fun. I'm ready. Yes, yes. All right. Uh, you want to start off the uh, news? Well, we do have the news, and unfortunately, I'm not as a. Uh, I, I don't have the choreography in terms of the the, <laughs> the things that you guys normally have uh, with John, but I will do my very best. So, uh, part of the headlines for this week: the iPhone D Tech on demand iPhone cases are now available at the Walt Disney World Resort, and now guests can find D Tech on demand phone cases for the iPhone 10. Do we do you call it the 10 or the iPhone X? I've called it both. I'm not sure okay. what to call it iPhone X. Yeah. So the iPhone X yeah. at Walt Disney World. We found the following at the marketplace at the Co-op Disney Springs. The cases cost twenty nine ninety nine or thirty four ninety nine if a guest chooses to have them personalized. The iPhone X or ten yeah. now shows up as an option in the kiosk. Sadly, there are not a ton of designs online yet, but it shouldn't be long until they're just as plentiful as all the other designs. And here's a look at everything available as of this evening. Evening, Tony might have some. Yeah. We'll put um, some picks there online. He'll, he might show you uh, on the video version. Yep. More designs could be on the way soon. D Tech on demand at the Magic Kingdom is the only other location with the iPhone 10 cases currently. Yeah. So, have you have you gotten a D Tech? I have not. D Tech iPhone I, case. Yeah, I found that they're not. They don't have enough padding on the edges mm-hmm. for, for my liking, especially this version that's got a glass back and a glass front. Mm. Uh, so this case here is clear, but it's got some uh, pretty significant padding on mm. the corners. So I have my D Tech oh, phone case with Steamboat in terms of shock and and yeah. and being dropped. However, this is a different style of case than they make at D Tech. Right. So look at it. Look at the quality. I have to say that this D Tech style of case for my iPhone 6 Plus has served me well, so I can't I can't complain. And the quality has been much better than I expected. So I've had people where the I guess it, the the edges have come apart from the back. Yeah, um, I've seen that. I don't know twenty nine dollars for a case seems like an awful lot of money. This case was not twenty nine dollars. I can tell you that. Uh, oh yeah, Amazon. Yeah, I've I've gotten some really good generic cases yeah. from Amazon, mm. and I've gotten some pretty bad generic cases on Amazon. Right. So I think it's just a matter of you you checking it out. I know that Kristen at one point had a Figment D Tech case, oh, yeah. and it didn't last very long. Yeah. So you know, buyer beware, your mileage will vary. Right. <laughs> and, and and literally, it's a sticker. You know, they print on a sticker and they put the sticker on the back of the plastic black case. That's it. Mm. It's a sticker for $29. I, I bet if you went to Staples, you can probably print something out just just like that if you bought a plain old black case and put a sticker on it of your well, favorite character. <laughs> well, truth be told, there are some really good designs there at D-Tech. Yes. And uh, especially with the new Star Wars film and yeah. with the new Marvel film with Thor Ragnarok and everything. I mean, you could get some pretty cool designs, but... You know, you're, like I said, mileage may vary. And if you're like me, I drop my phone constantly. Right. You might want to get something with a little bit more padding, as you said. So <laughs> yeah. buy or beware. Yeah. I, I, I try not to drop my phone. 
<laughs> I do in frustration. <laughs> That's probably true. Well, speaking speaking of tied into phones, you got something about Instagram, right? Yeah. So uh, Disneyland is Instagram's most most photographed place in 2017. Uh, mm. Instagram recently revealed that the most popular photo spots around the globe for 2017 uh, is Disneyland uh, parks uh, top the list. I, I could see that. I mean, everybody's got a camera. I can't say camera. Everybody's got a phone out in the parks taking a picture of something. Uh, the popular social media site with 800 million users announced the top 10 most Instagram locations uh, year in review. Disney properties were among the top of the Instagram list in 2016, but this year the company broke out specific locations, giving Disney four spots on the top 10. Uh, the happiest place on Earth leads the pack, that's Disneyland, uh, drives the most snapshots shared on the social media platform. Tokyo Disneyland, uh, yeah, uh, ranks number five. Uh, Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom takes the sixth spot, and Disney California Adventure uh, spot takes number nine. I can, uh, yeah, wow. I could definitely see Tokyo Disney uh, up there in the top five. It's a beautiful yeah, park. Just sheer numbers. Yeah, and just yeah, for sheer numbers. Yeah, sheer numbers too. <laughs> you know, I mean, but it, it's it's interesting though because you would think with all the people that visit Walt Disney World, and maybe it's just because of whatever hashtag they use or whatever the case is, and maybe it's because it's divided up among different parks, but you would have thought at least Walt Disney World or Magic Kingdom would be. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised you know. we're number six, but... Mm-hmm. Um, at least the top five. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, well. I guess they're using geolocation, maybe? Maybe that and hashtag? Okay, well, that makes sense. Yeah, because right, <laughs> you think you can geolocate a photo. Right, Yeah. exactly. Yeah, so... Exactly. Well, it is interesting. I, I mean, you, me, Kristen, John, every time we're in the parks, we're always tagging each other. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just the way it is. Take a picture of food, though. <laughs> of food, hey, among other things, you know. We'll, sometimes we'll take pictures of sometimes we're in a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you flooding my feed with all those food pictures, Tony? <laughs> Occasionally there's uh, non-food <laughs> pictures in my feed. <laughs> All right. Hey, as Alton mentioned at the top of the show, we're having our Christmas call this Saturday, 7 p.m. Meet us at the Outer Rim at the Contemporary, and we will start our journey there. Uh, and we'll go around and get a cocktail, some Christmas decorations, this whole new stuff I haven't seen. So I'll be seeing it for the first time with you all uh, on uh, this Saturday. Uh, don't forget you can uh, listen to the show on your Echo or yeah, Amazon Echo, your Amazon dot. Uh, just by asking your friendly Echo to play the Disney Parks podcast. We won't get anybody's Echo going. Uh, don't yes. forget to visit us. Uh, we have a store. We have, If you're looking for Christmas gifts, uh, go visit us at Disney Parks Podcast forward slash uh, shop. We got stuff there. Uh, go visit John to get his book. Uh, he's got a sale, and I'm not sure of his promo code. He did not leave that with me. So uh, go to www.parkhoppers.com. And I'm sure it's right on the front there. You can see uh, a link to get his book. Uh, my book is also on sale with the coupon code FALL2017. And you can get that at a reduced price. All right. So, uh, Aljun, talk about uh, what's going on with these uh, Fast Passes over at Epcot now. All right. So, Fast Pass reservations for Frozen Ever After at Epcot are now available beginning at 9 a.m. daily. All right. So, get your Frozen on. Previously, beginning at 11 a.m. every day, guests can now find Fast Pass reservations for Frozen Ever After at Epcot beginning at 9 a.m. every day through the Walt Disney World website and the My Disney Experience app. My favorite app ever. The uh, Frozen Ever After takes guests through the kingdom of Arendelle because, uh, you know, of all of its frozen fun. Yeah. Uh, located in the Norway Pavilion, Frozen Ever After celebrates a summer snow day on a journey through the frozen Willow Forest, past the Troll Valley and up to Queen Elsa's Palace, high up on the North Mountain. Epcot is one of the four theme parks at Walt Disney World Resort there at uh, the Disney World Resort. And uh, guests aren't interested in hunting for a fast pass or uh, 
braving the standby lines frozen ever after sparkling dessert party is also available. So yeah. you've got those options available to you. Luckily for me, Kristen and myself, my wife and I were able to do that frozen ever after uh, at uh, the food and wine festival uh, during the week. So we were actually for the first time in didn't forever. have to eat in forever. <laughs> for the first time in for do I do a bunch of good song? <laughs> uh, so how was the dessert party? party? Was it a uh, a good value or what did you, what did you think? Oh, about the uh about the, uh, the the attraction itself? No, the dessert party. You know what we didn't do the dessert party. Oh, okay. No, we didn't do the dessert party. We we simply just were able to, for some happenstance, able to just hop on the ride. I think wow. there was a maybe a ten to fifteen minute long wait, and it didn't take that long to go through. And it's the first time in forever uh, that there was not a line, right? Wow! So we're able to just hop on and, and do it because I, I've made it a point to say to myself, I want to ride this ride, I want to experience the refurbished ride, but I didn't want to stand in the line, and I wasn't going to stay in line all day. Yeah. For yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. this is a great option for people that want, that feel like me. We want to want to do Frozen, and maybe you've got kids or something, and you you want to bypass the lines. At least you have that. Uh, going for you. And if anything, the frozen ever after dessert party. Now we have done dessert parties at Epcot before at Tony and you have, yep. and they're not bad. So, right, right. Right. and I think this one is right in the middle there to uh, get a good view of illuminations. And then I think they uh, take you out onto uh, frozen. I'm glad that they're, they've kind of removed this restriction of you can, couldn't get them until, you know, 11. I guess you can't make them ahead of time. Like if you you have your 180 day window, I guess, you still have to wait until the day of, which I still think is a crazy restriction. I almost, I almost feel like it's. Well, I think no matter what they do, it's going to be crazy. Yeah. I just yeah. because you have to be Johnny on the spot with the the app. Yeah. And as I kind of alluded to in my sarcasm, the the app, yeah. it's just, you know, it loads, you know, it's crazily. Not- you know, it's something that you definitely have to uh, try to get into ahead of time before you hit the resorts because once you hit the resorts that the app is just very wonky in my opinion yeah it's because everybody is trying to do the same thing you're trying to do mm-hmm. in the same place so the cell service you know gets a stranglehold so mm-hmm. yeah the bandwidth uh, yeah bandwidth slows to a crawl yeah exactly so uh where was i just recently i was just someplace recently i was trying to do something on my phone and then it, I forgot there's like 8,000 million other people trying to do the same thing. I was like, all right, I'm going to stop. The case? I'm going to just go home. I'll do it there. Well, Disney in, in Internet service by itself is yeah. infamously slow. Right, right. And it always has been slow. Yeah. And even with the refurbishments with the, and the upgrades of the Internet in the resorts itself, yeah. it yeah. doesn't it doesn't help because everybody's trying to do it. And as you mentioned yeah. with the last uh, story about Instagram, everybody's Instagramming, everyone's right. streaming right. live. Right. This The bandwidth is, is such a, uh, a small, you know, so small there at the parks. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the other thing too that was, uh, you know, uh, someone, a friend of ours just went to Disneyland and, uh, they found out that when they buy their Max Pass, uh, even though they buy it, they don't get to make any Fast Passes until they're actually inside the park. Really? Yeah. And huh. one of the things it says when, it's, when you're paying for it, it says, uh, even though you're buying this fast pass, uh, this does not guarantee you fast passes for any attraction. I'm like, well, why am I paying for it then if it doesn't guarantee me anything? I know, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and uh, apparently you have to be, you know, I guess the app geolocates you and says, hey, you're not in the park and you can't make any, uh, you know, fast pass reservations. I was like, there you go. Crazy. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. I, I don't know what to think of. Anyway, uh, hey, last week we had a trivia question. We didn't get anybody to respond, but the question was, what are the two things that are unique about Space Mountain in Disneyland Paris? Do you know, Alton? What are some unique things about Space two, Mountain in Disneyland? Two things that are unique to their Space Mountain that we don't have in other any other Space Mountain. So I think it's the fact that Paris is actually an inversion coaster. Yep. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Yep. That's I don't know what the other one is. And the other one is it's the fastest of all the 
Uh, oh, speed metal. well, I guess it would be to be an inversion, right? Yeah. If you're going to go up sound, you don't want to go slowly. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The blood is slowly rushing through my head. <laughs> you going to fall back. <laughs> and it just stopped. <laughs> oh, a screeching halt. <laughs> exactly. Hello. Help. Help, please. <laughs> yeah. A uh, little push, please. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this week's trivia question is: What American history theme park did the Disney Company originally plan to build near Haymarket, Virginia? Mm, good, gotta, good question, Tony. Yeah, you got to be an oldie to to remember this. You got to be a, and a Disney freak, I think. Uh, well, that, this is true, and there's been a lot of documentaries about this. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is kind of cool. Right. Hey, uh, you still working on uh, getting the former chairman of the Walt Disney Company on the program? Yes. I he can speak about this. I, he, he could. He could. <laughs> I got to wait for Bob to leave if he ever decides to leave. I think 2019 is in the- He's pushing back. His, he's pushing back. Every time he's like, no. <laughs> You're holding up my whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So if you know the answer to uh, this week's trivia question, question, email us at DisneyParksPodcast at gmail.com. Uh, and we'd like to thank all of our Patreons. Uh, if you'd like to become a Patreon, go visit us at patreon.com forward slash Disney Parks Podcast. We have lots of uh, fun stuff over there. And we'd like yes. to thank our current supporters, David M., Willie, Jeremy, Katie, Eva, Grant, Ernie, David, uh, R, Ron, Christy, and Ross. Thank you for your contributions. Hey, you have the entire cast of friends donating to your Patreon? Yeah. <laughs> 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 They'll be there for you. <laughs> exactly. We just need uh, Courtney and Rachel. <laughs> and exactly. <BB. laughs> exactly. Uh, smelly cat. Yeah, smelly cat. Oh, my God. <laughs> started. All right. So Shanghai Disney uh, is getting in the game of the Toy Story uh, action. Mm. They posted uh, some uh, pretty interesting photos, very similar to ours, uh, a few different changes that they have. They are getting the uh, Slinky Dog Spin, is what they're calling theirs. I think ours is called the Slinky Dog Run. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Shanghai Disneyland guests will be invited to become part of the honorary toys in Disney's Toy Story Land, where they will be able to seat inside a Slinky Dog's springy spirals and race, a, whoop, excuse me, race around a wavy roundabout. So that nice. doesn't sound like a coaster. It sounds like something different. Oh. I don't know. I'll have to look this up. Yeah. Uh, Rex Racer uh, is another attraction. Uh, with help from a Triosop's uh, friend Trixie, Rex will invite guests to climb into an RC for a thrilling ride on the U shaped track with Rex at the controls. RC Racer with guests aboard zips forward and backwards at an ever increasing heights and exhilarating speed. This is just a kind of loop de loo thing. Mm-hmm. In a in a car. Yeah, you know, so the the Slinky Dog ride looks mm-hmm. like it could be one of those. Just from the graphic I see on the Disney Parks blog, mm-hmm. it looks like it's one of those. Um, it goes round and round, kind of like a not like a like a gyroscope kind of ride or whatever. But it looks like it's just one of those rides that literally goes round and round really fast. Where. The tri- Triceratops ride, the Trixie ride, mm-hmm. looks like one of those. You know, you used to go into the Viking boat and used right. to rock back and yeah. forth like this. Yeah. So it's kind of on a racetrack that does right. that, which is, which is kind of neat. I, I like, I like that that whole idea. Uh, then you have Woody's Roundup, where Sheriff Woody has rounded up a herd of ponies, each one pulling a cart in a ranch set up by Andy. Guests can climb aboard the carts as the ponies start a little square dance, swinging their carts to and fro uh, in time to the lively music. Now, this sounds like almost Mater's uh, Jamboree thing. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. So they just repurposed Mater's uh, nice. Jamboree. I like that ride. It's a good ride. I haven't been on it yet. I was on the yep. old Luigi ride. Yeah, so Mater, Toe Mater's ride over there at uh, DCA will definitely uh, shake loose a kidney stone if you're not careful. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> I know for a fact. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, first aid, please. <laughs> <laughs> Get me off this ride. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, they're going to have a meeting post. So next to Woody's Roundup is an Old West town made up of hitching posts and facades for various enterprises, such as the sheriff's office, salon, the bank. Uh, that's where guests can meet and pose uh, for photos with some of uh, uh, your favorite Toy Story characters, including with, uh, Woody, Jesse, and Bullseye. So, oh, it looks nice. Yeah, so this is going to be a pretty big expansion that they're doing there. I, listen, I can't believe they're expanding already. They're only a year old. Well, you know, th- that's the thing about that resort uh, and and the other, you know, Tokyo Disney expansion right. and different things. There's so many locals that visit those parks. Mm-hmm. They have to keep on growing and, right. and keep building it. That's one of the things I, I don't know if they – I, I don't know if that was always the case in regards to them building right. or the expansion and the timetable for the expansion, but uh, maybe they just wanted to get a whole bunch of people through the gate first so they can help finance this expansion because they couldn't launch it in time, you know? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, they had a very successful first year, so. I would say. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. other thing, too, is they're getting an Al's Toy Barn uh, where merchandise will be sold. And that, oh, that's, that's good. something we're not getting. I actually just this week and I saw the Toy Story model for us here in the studios and I was mm-hmm. kind of taken aback at how small it was. Yeah. You know, it's only two attractions, a quick service, and that's it. I was like, what? Well, and then you have to think too, you've got Toy Story Mania is still going to be part of that. Right. You know, so that'll be three and maybe, maybe if, Maybe some more um, when they refurbish Hollywood Boulevard, right? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I think. Yeah, I think. Uh, didn't, didn't we? Didn't you guys talk about? I know we talked about on Source of Radio about uh, maybe Monsters Inc. Yeah, that's kind of expanding into the whole Pixar place. So you've got the whole Toy Story area, then you'll have the whole Monsters Inc. area. So right. that whole Pixar area is going to transform right there outside of animation. So, yeah. and I've even heard, uh, you know, where. Uh, what is it? Playhouse, Mermaid, and uh, Star Wars Launch Bay may also be consumed uh, by that area. Once you know Star Wars Land is done, they move Launch Bay over there, and then the other two things may go bye bye as well and become some part of you know Pixar Place, Toy Story Land. Yeah. Yeah, the whole Pixar era though it's it's long overdue. It's it's going to be really nice when it, when it's all completed. But we know we're years away from a 2019, 2021. I mean, we're looking way into the future here. Yeah, so well, we'll see. What It'll happens. be here. We'll be here sooner than you know sooner than we think. So it will be. Hey, uh, when you come down, you're going to have to go. Uh, I may have to check this out too. Uh, I'll tell them what's coming up at the uh, Odyssey. Okay, so. They've got a cookie nook inside the Odyssey, the Festival Center at Epcot for the Festival of the Holidays. So a bunch of the reviews of the marketplaces at Epcot's International Festival has been uh, published. And that cookie nook, which is located in the uh, the Festival Center, um, which is over there in the Odyssey building in between Future World and uh, the World Showcase, has got a bunch of different things for you to try. And I have to say, the menu sounds yummy. Right. So they have warm apple fritter with cinnamon ice cream and warm caramel sauce for four seventy five. The snowflake sugar cookie for four bucks. They've got, and these are all relatively priced. You know, anywhere from you know four twenty five yeah. and up. So I'll, I'll dispense with the, the prices. But snickerdoodle cinnamon sugar cookies. Uh, double chocolate peppermint cookie, just a whole bunch of cookies, ginger snaps, um, chocolate cake with apricot jam and chocolate glaze. They've got gingerbread cookies, sugar tree, chocolate chunk cookies, probably my favorite, right. uh, brew hub pumpkin spice, Dunkelweiss. So that's nice. It looks like yeah. they've got some drinks there. I think, right. uh, that's from Lakeland and I think that's a beer. Yes. So that's, uh, that's great. I, I like the Dunkelweiss and let's see, we've got, um, the, Palladia, did I say that? Playlinda, I think. Playlinda, Playlinda Brewing Company Sparkling Christmas Coffee Blonde. Mm. And these are all Florida local beers. Mm. Then the 28 Central Beer Company Joy for from the World Holiday Double Double. Yeah. And then the Cranberry Sprite Punch with Pear Vodka. Mm, that's nine bucks. That's yummy. Holiday Beer Flight, especially red wines and white wines. Uh, Cranberry Florida Grove wine and the Nestle chocolate hot cocoa with creme de menthe, made eight bucks, wow. and the non-alcoholic chocolate water for three dollars. <laughs> so 
it's definitely a place that you can get in there. Uh, it's once again seasonal. Yeah. It's a rather pleasant place to enjoy a snack while watching classic cartoons, including Mickey's Christmas Carol in its entirety. Right. So right. if anything, uh, take a break, get some refreshments, get your holiday brew on, and get your chocolate cookie and uh, have a good time. Yeah, probably not a place you want to visit with the kids and give them a sugar or a buzz. <laughs> well, maybe it is. You know, maybe maybe you give them that sugar buzz, then you walk around World Showcase, and but by the time you get to the opposite side, they're already cracked. <laughs> and then you can enjoy the rest of your time there at like the, the spice spice road table, just right. having libations right. to your heart's content. Or, or give them a nap in an American nap. Adventure. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Just yeah. put them to bed, baby. Uh, this weekend, I went to uh, a baseline over at uh, the studios for the first time. Just, How was it? It was uh, great. Uh, they have a lot of good beer over there. Mm. Uh, I would say they have a long line, but the line, you know, is out the door but moves very quickly. Uh, they have three registers and three people pouring and serving beer. Uh, it's just they don't have really a corral to kind of you know get people queued up to the right thing at the right place. It's just this kind of mass line. I, I think if they put a corral in there and a queue. Um, you know, which Disney is famous for, I think mm. that would make the line move a little bit faster than it does. Uh, the only thing I did not try was the food. They have pretzels and a charcuterie board. Ooh. I'll have to go well, we there. all like the meat and cheese, so. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's always yummy. Exactly. So They know how to, they know how to make their, their cheese boards, for sure. Yeah. And uh, obviously, the beer is not cheap. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Never is. Yeah. And most well, of it look, is from California as well, which is kind of weird. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I what I can appreciate uh, from the foodie perspective, and I know obviously my wife at Dining at Disney, uh, Kristen, is, is definitely a fan of this, but the fact that you can get local brews, quality brews, yeah. and get it in a beer flight is great. Right. Those seasonal beers are always uh, yummy, and I think – that if you're looking for something unique and you want to try something, then why not? I mean, they're investing some some money into these local local breweries, and I really can appreciate that. And uh, nothing nothing's better than supporting your local local economy and your local businesses. So I, I can appreciate that. Yeah, it's also now the good place to uh, wait for your table while you're at Sci-Fi because it connects directly to the Sci-Fi uh, restaurant. So it's a great place to sit, relax, and have a beer before your reservation or. If you didn't make one and you went there and they tell you, well, it's a 45 minute wait, well, at least you can go have a, a nice cocktail. And I think, exactly. I think when Star Wars Land opens up, this place is going to be a zoo because it's the first thing that people are going to see before they get to uh, Star uh, Wars Land. So, yeah, they might as well go in double fisted and get some drinks for that long line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's or, what I do. Or, or when they tell you, well, we, you know, the area is full, you're going to have to wait here. Well, now you're going to be waiting at a bar. Might as well. Yeah. Exactly. Might as well drink while you wait. Exactly. That's what I say. Exactly. So. Exactly right. So, well, we have that going on. And well, speaking of things to do when you wait, right? A, a lot of a lot of us end up watching Disney movies on our. our or, or, or Redbox is doing. <laughs> should we say? Uh, Disney just filed a suit against Redbox, and listen to what Redbox is doing. So Redbox, uh, who launched a, a service in October that offers customers a digital code to purchase a Disney movie. The Redbox kiosk printed out the code with the information and then how to download the movie uh, from Disney services or affiliated sites. Now, Redbox buys their DVDs and Blu-rays on the open market. They don't get them you know, from Disney with just the disc or whatever. They're buying them like we would as a consumer from you know stores. Mm-hmm. And inside that... Uh, like most of mine over here, all have a digital code which gives you uh, the right to a digital version of that movie. Not all of them, but a good majority of them. So they were selling those codes that they were buying to (laughs) their customers. Mm. Uh, So when Disney filed a suit in federal court in Los Angeles, Disney claims that every title sold by Redbox costs in up to $150,000 in damages in addition, Disney also claims that they deserve all the money made from the sale of these digital codes. Mm. Uh, I think Redbox is going to be rethinking their Disney strategy. 
<laughs> what do you think about that, Tony? Uh, I have an interesting. I have an interesting thought about that. But go ahead. Yeah. So apparently Disney is saying too that on that code it says it's not supposed to be sold or transferred to right. anybody else. So that that's how you know they're being able to sue them. I, I don't. It's it's not. I. I I, I would not endorse that. That is a that was a bad, bad decision, Redbox, to to do that. And I it really was. That, but you know what? Redbox should have gone to Disney and said, "Listen, we'd like to put your movies on our machines and sell them. You know, can we get you know like a distribution, like everybody else, like Netflix, probably." Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and that's the that's the whole point of that. The codes are not for sale or transfer and they buy them on the open market like everybody else, but that doesn't give them a right to distribute those codes. Right. Uh, it's different. It's different if perhaps maybe, Mm -hmm. uh, a private citizen were to give a code because that uh, they're not for, they're, they're not a retail entity. Right. Per se, one could make an argument for that. However, the fact that if I buy a DVD and give you the digital code, I would be transferring it to you. Yeah. Which is kind of a violation of, uh, depending on how you interpret the violation of that. Sure, sure. You know, and there are a lot of people that, in fact, buy Marvel Comics and it comes with a free code. However, I don't believe the code for those Marvel Comics for digital copy is non-transferable. It's yeah. an we use only once code. Right. And I think that if I, and I don't know how that, that, that word or that verbiage is used, but I don't think it's in violation of anything yeah. because you are the owner of that comic and that code and you can give it to him ever you want because of the language used in that contract. So it's a very slippery slope, but I think yeah. that's just a very bad call on red boxes thing to, to store all those digital codes from those DVDs and then decide to give them away and it'd be in violation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if they would have, you know, like if, if they were to randomly, like if you went to Redbox, rented, you know, Moana, and, you know, the machine said, hey, by the way, you randomly are eligible to get this code. Here's the code you can, you know, download. I don't know if that would have, you know, made Disney any better, that they were just giving them away randomly to people that rented a movie. Probably not. I don't know. I, I, I just think Redbox made a really bad decision. Well, that decision will cost them dearly. Oh, I'm sure. yeah. I'm sure they will cost them yeah. dearly. I wouldn't be surprised if Redbox takes all the Disney movies out and just says, you know, see you later. Well, they might, but think about how much money they've invested in all those movies. Yeah. Buying them from the, you know, the, the prime, you know, whatever, their their secondary market, or whatever, whatever they've done. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of things that they stand at Marvel and Disney tend to make a lot of money off of is the Black Panther. Have you seen the latest trailers? I have not. Oh my gosh. I don't watch trailers. This movie. You don't watch trailers? <laughs> okay, you and Chris. Yeah, you my wife and I are totally different. I I'll like bring the trailer. I want to see more. <laughs> and then Kristen's like, no, don't spoil it because yeah. they show all the good parts in the trailer. Yes, I agree. Yeah, well, <clears throat> Black Panther is one of those uh, very popular Marvel characters, soon to be, coming in their own standalone Marvel film uh, this spring. And Black Panther opening February 16th of 2018 will have a walkabout character at DCA. So Black Panther uh, follows the the king of Wakanda, the fictional African country, T'Challa, mm-hmm. who happens to after the death of his father, become the king of Wakanda. And when he returns home to this isolated, technologically advanced African nation to succeed to the, succeed to the throne and take his rightful place as king, but a powerful old enemy reappears. Wow. And T'Challa's medal as king and Black Panther, the mantle of Black Panther, is tested when he's drawn into a, fordable, a formidable contact, uh, of conflict that puts the fate of Wakanda and the entire world at risk. Faced with treachery and danger, the young king must rally his allies and release the full power of the Black Panther to beat his po- foes and secure safety for his people and their way of life. Check it out because park guests will have the opportunity to encounter the king, T'Challa, um, this spring. And it looks like it's going to happen early 
next year because uh, the fill opens February 16th. So I'm thinking uh, right after New Year's, they're probably going to have a, a meet and greet to get people all hyped up for, for Black Panther. This is exciting times. Uh, there hasn't necessarily been a given date upon his arrival at Disney's California Adventure, but uh, I'm sure the Disney Parks blog and Disney by the Numbers and uh, WDW Park Hoppers and everywhere you yeah. get this informed as to when the meet and greet happens. Yeah. Now, do you think they'll uh, bring this to Disney World, or is this one of those Marvel characters that they can't out on? Oh, no, they can. Yeah, they they can bring it. You know, basically, the, the Marvel characters that are stuck at Universal Studios mm. happens to be the X-Men mm-hmm. and a couple of the Avengers. Okay. So you're going to see X-Men, mm-hmm. uh, Spider-Man, Captain America, Iron Man, um all those characters are going to be stuck at Universal, yeah. but I do believe Black Panther is one of those characters that will more than likely end up uh, hanging out with the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, and Doctor Strange there at uh, at Walt Disney World at some point. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, interesting. yeah it's crazy. <laughs> but of course, if this whole thing with a uh, with Disney buying out everybody, you know, you never know what might happen here before 2019 because I guess they're, once again, Marvel and, and Disney are in talks to buy the remaining assets, uh, Marvel assets from Fox again. I know. I, I so uh, and, it's exciting I, times because that only means that if um, if there's more leverage there behind one of the studios to own some of their intellectual properties, uh that gives uh, Marvel and Disney a little bit more leverage to maybe take back some of those licenses from Universal Studios. We'll see. Yeah. And I was just reading that Fox is favoring Disney in that buyout, too. So. Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, I think everybody's waiting to see Wolverine pop up in an Avengers movie at some point. <laughs> right? It'd be interesting. It would be. Uh, talk about Hugh Jackman might get his wish. Yeah. Hey, you're going to be down uh, You're gonna be down here uh, for yeah. Star Wars. Do you have uh, tickets to see Star Wars, or are you... You're going to wait till you get home. I don't know if we're going to see the Star Wars event. Um, I, I, I don't really know if that's really as much as a huge Star Wars fan. I am, as you can tell from my shirt, <laughs> huge Star Wars fan here and my, my freaking Tervis, you know, that's a Star Wars Tervis. But I obviously, I'm, yeah, there you go in the Spiro. You know, we're big Star Wars fans, Tony and myself and John and Kristen and Park Hopper said we love Star Wars. But the thing is, is that I don't know if I to spend the money for that, mm. but I can tell you what I do want to spend money on, but possibly would be that Star Wars uh, virtual adventure that's at downtown or that it's at oh, Disney yeah. Springs. At Disney Springs, yeah. Did you do that yet? I have not done that yet. I got to get over there. Maybe we should do it together. Yeah, yeah. Let me know. Uh, I'll go with you. Yeah. Uh, I have a feeling that that's not going to be the only thing they do there. I think they're going to be testing some other stuff that they're going to use in Star Wars Land in that little adventure thing pavilion that they created over there. So that's not yeah. going to be the first and the only thing we see before Star Wars Land opens up. I think. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing that brand new scene at uh, Star Wars. Yeah. So. Looking forward to that for sure. Right, right. Hey, it's me. Yes, now the uh, top. Oh, the top of the show. Uh, these magnets are available yeah. uh, December first to the seventeenth at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Uh, you can pick them up at Mickey's of Hollywood, Celebrity Five and Ten, and Once Upon a Toy uh, Time. They're saying that you need your pass holder and a photo ID. I just sold my pass holder card. They did not ask for any ID. And like I said, people were going back. I, I saw them going from store to store to store <laughs> to to get multiple magnets. So uh, if you are, uh, yeah. yeah, if you are a pass holder, if you're coming down and you're a pass holder, uh, stop by the studios and get one. It's, it's very cute. Nice to look. How much did you nice. say they were? They were free. How much did you say? Free. They were free. Free. Are you kidding me? Free. You just nice. go by and say, "I want one." Yeah. Well, if it's free, it's me. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> hey, speaking of free, you know, they've got these new sweater gift cards that include a free holiday pin. You know, have you gotten your ugly sweater this, this season, Tony? No. no. <laughs> You're not a sweater guy, I know. No, I live in Florida. What would I do with a sweater? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? So Disney's released a new series of Disney gift cards featuring holiday sweaters. 
that include an exclusive Disney trading pin, and these limited edition pins featuring Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, are gingerbread cookies, and they're only available with this offer. The four gift cards must be purchased with a starting value of $100 each and can be found at select locations throughout the Disneyland Resort and the Walt Disney World Resort. Other new holiday gift cards include the Holiday Gingerbread House Disney gift card, which is available at both parks, uh, East Coast, West Coast, with a minimum value of $15, and a new Mickey and Minnie gift card that has an exclusive design to each coast. <laughs> at the Disneyland Resort, Mickey and Minnie share a look while posing for a holiday picture. And at the Walt Disney World Resort, Minnie and Mickey offer a candy cane. Many more holiday designs are, designs are available, both in the parks and online. Disney gift cards can be used at the resorts, at Disney Cruise Line, Adventures by Disney, the Disney Store, and affiliated websites and apps. So be on the lookout for that if you especially want to get that free pin, buy that big dollar gift card, and uh, add to your collection. Yeah. Hey, give out anything for free, so that's a nice little uh, bonus. Yeah, and you know, if you're going to spend money in the park anyway, and you know you're going to spend 100 bucks at Disney Springs or at Downtown Disney on the West Coast, you might as well buy the gift card and then just spend money on the gift card and get your free pin, right? Exactly. Exactly. Might as well. Hey, if you're a, a DVC member, they announced a ton. Uh, they Actually, I think they announced the entire schedule of all the Moonlight Magic dates uh, for 2018, which I thought is kind of unusual. Normally, they announce them as the year progresses. This year, they've decided to just throw them all out there. Uh, so mm. uh, we'll have to try and post these because there's a lot of uh, dates and information to remember. And Moonlight Magic is uh, you get access to the park after it closes for the day, or typically they shut it down a little bit earlier, uh, You know, typically around 7 p.m. to about midnight. And then they usually have uh, free refreshments as well. You know, there's dance parties, there's, you know, all kinds of uh, stuff going on, special characters uh, in the parks, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I just find that sometimes I think they're a little bit overcrowded. They're selling this as if there's less people, and (laughs) there's a lot of people. So (laughs) just be careful, you know, set your expectation at the medium, low level. (laughs) <laughs> you know I think the park is going to be empty Because it's only for DVC members It's not that way Alright so kicking yeah. this off uh, Is January 11th and 28th And February 6th uh, The Magic Kingdom uh, Booking will start on December 7th And then uh, uh, December 7th for resort guests DVC resort guests And then if you don't have a reservation uh, It will start on December 21st If there's any uh, room left and then March 21st, April 17th, and May 16th at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And if you notice, they're not doing just one night uh, any longer for these. They're doing three nights, which is, I guess, three times as bad. Uh, so this begins on February 8th uh, with reservations, and then February 22nd if you don't have a reservation. Uh, May 30th, June 11th at Disney's Typhoon Lagoon. And that will start on April 19th with reservations and then May 3rd with the out. Uh, July 16th and August 13th at Epcot. And uh, reservations on June 6th without reservations June 20th. September 19th, September 26th, and October 3rd at Disney's Hollywood Studios. I think I'm going to go to this one. Uh, this starts uh, with reservations on August 30th and without on September 13th. November 15th at Disney's California Adventure Park, and everybody is October 4th. Uh, it's hmm. important to note that it's only one event date for each participating park per available membership. Uh, you'll need one Disney DVC valid membership and a photo ID when you enter, uh, and I think you can do up to six people in your traveling party. Sign up for that. Uh, you cannot just show up for these. You have to book by calling member services. Uh, and like I said, we'll post these dates and the number uh, that you can start uh, calling. Are, are these are these events better than the all night park type of events? Uh, yeah, a little bit better. Obviously, the all night thing is a is a huge you know crowd killer, but it's not as good as the. Oh, what do they sell it at? Um, Disney at Dark, 
Yeah. All right. The Disney at Dark event is only limited to a couple thousand people. Okay. This is more like twenty to twenty five thousand people per night. Gotcha. So it's a large crowd. Um, yeah. You know, I did the one at the Magic Kingdom with my family uh, this past year, and mm-hmm. uh, it, you know, they had uh, uh, what is it? Cos- no, Cosmic Rays? No. Uh, launch Pad? No. Where Sunny Eclipse is? What is that? The the uh, the hangar ba- uh, the hangar bay? No, the co- Cosmic Rays. Oh, Cosmic Rays, yes, Cosmic. yes, Cosmic So they Rays. had that all open for the free refreshments. And it took like 20 minutes to get it because people were like, you know, with a tray going, oh, I want, uh, you know, six of the cookies, six of the drinks. I want uh, some of the ice cream. And some of the, you know, they were loading up their trays. You know, and the poor people like having to run all over a place to get all this stuff. So- yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. And, yes, I, I, I did actually mean that uh, Disney After Dark mm. um, program because – uh, we ended up doing it and it was great but it's so funny you see people with these plastic bags full of free cokes that they're getting and they're just walking out of the park with it i try to get myself a, a mickey bar yeah after you know right as the event closed down and like they got rid of all the kiosks you know and it's like where's my mickey bar and someone at the resort ended up giving me a, rig- a mickey bar after hearing my story and it's not that i was begging or anything i was yeah. just like oh i was just kind of disappointed at it right but I wasn't one of the people like walking out with like a six pack of drinks for free. <laughs> hey, come on! It was just crazy. That's but a lot of work for six packs of a uh, six pack of drinks. It is. I mean, because you're waiting in line for 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 all that yeah. for those amenities. But yeah. but so it's interesting we, uh, that this is going to be big. Yeah, the, big Robin and Robin and I are going in February. Okay. To the well, cool. Kingdom. Well, you'll have to. I can't wait to hear your report to see. Um, there better not be if, anybody there. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my hope. Anytime I go to the park, I hope nobody's there, <laughs> so I can walk out of the rides. Well, last year they said that they went and they went like on the mine train like seven times because it was just nobody else there. Well, on After Dark, that's that's for sure going to be the case. But you know, with something like this, I, I have no experience with, so that's something you yeah. guys could can definitely uh, yeah. report on. We'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So one of my favorite actors in the pantheon Snake. of acting Snake happens Pliskin. to be Kurt Russell. You a big fan of Kurt Russell? Uh, I'm a Snake Plissken fan. Okay, all right. You're you're, you're a fan of uh, how, Escape from L.A., Escape from New York, right? Uh, you know, he's been in the Grindhouse uh, films. He's been in Sky High, which is a highly underrated right. Disney film. Uh, he was in Miracle, which is one of Kristen's favorites because of the the hockey, um, you know, tie in with that fan of him from uh, uh, from many of the different films. Uh, more recently, Ego from Guardians of the Galaxy two, right, and The Hateful Eight, Stargate. The list goes on and on. But uh, I do, I am a big fan of Kurt Russell, and now you have an opportunity to check out his wine. So later this month, DVC members have the opportunity to visit with Disney legend Kurt Russell himself there December 10th, which is a Sunday. And they're going to have a DVC members only event at Epcot with special guest Kurt Russell. Wow. Now the screen icon will spend approximately 45 minutes on stage with Disney Files Magazine editor Ryan March discussing his career, which includes countless of appearances in Disney productions. The event will also include a wine tasting featuring two varieties from the Russell Gogi Wines label, which uh, Goldie Hawn, you know, is his partner in that, of course, partner in life and partner in wine. Yep. So the uh, Gogi Wines are featured at a number of different Walt Disney World and Disneyland restaurants. We've talked about that on the Dining at Disney podcast, including uh, Citricose Carry at Flying Fish, Napa Rose down there on the West Coast. Yep. And attendees will also receive preferred seating for the event's 5 p.m. presentation of the Candlelight Processional narrated by Russell. Huh. So how cool is that? So uh, I I think that that is going to be super cool. Yeah. And if you're able to, as a DVC uh, member, Tony, you can get in on this if you want because you're a DVC. And uh, check out Kurt himself. And I wonder if you're going to be uh, able to uh, to spend a little bit more time with him. Uh, the event mm. is also priced at $125 is limited to just 60 participants. Wow. And who knows at the time that this show is published or as we go live if there are going to be any left. Yeah. 
because it is a, a once in a lifetime experience to meet Kurt Russell or at least be in the same area to, to have that meet and greet. For additional details, feel free to contact DBC member services. So you better do it and you better do it quick. Do it now. Get it done. I think it was great. I, I, I knew when he was uh, signing up or when he was featured to do the candlelight processional that that was going to surely be a quote unquote sellout performance. Yeah. And uh, I think that's that's really cool that he's doing this in addition to him doing the candlelight processional to kind of talk about his wine and probably uh, sell a bunch of wine, too, as an opportunity to get his wine label uh, out there. Because if there's anything that's been proven, it's that Disney fans support those actors and, and, and people that uh, do those candlelight processionals that do the in-store uh, meet and greets and, and stuff like that, that we go crazy over that kind of type of merch. And experience it. So, yeah. so hopefully some <coughs> down there experience it. So, uh, I think the name of his wine label, I have a feeling, uh, that name is the character, uh, Goldie played on, uh, laughing. Uh, I have to go check. Really? Yeah. I'll have to go check that out. Okay. Well, it, I'll it tell seems you. like a familiar name. Uh, like I've seen that before. Well. I'll check it in for sure. All right. Okay. Uh, hey, we're going to wrap up the show with some uh, headline news. Uh, Tiana's riverboat party has been extended. It's now daily uh, through December 23rd through the 31st on select dates and now through January 6th. So if that is something you want to do, you go out on the cruise boat. I think there's a, what's they calling an ice cream social or something uh, out on the riverboat. And then you uh, come back and it's all over. <laughs> uh, well, you do get a little meet and greet with Tiana, too. Uh, Disney Springs' new Italian restaurant uh, in, uh, has a new executive chef, uh, and they have a Michelin star past. These three new Italian restaurants uh, right there where the Edison is being built, uh, they're going to have a Michelin star uh, chef. Nice. I can't wait. More food. I bet. Bring the food on. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Disney Parks Holiday Decorating Special is coming up. It's on free form. Uh, I think Whoopi Ber- Goldberg's got one, and uh, I think they have other ones planned as well. So they're not just doing the Christmas parade thing on Christmas Day. They're they're not doing like a whole bunch of series of shows on free form in the Disney Channel uh, prior to the parade. On um. and if you have Mickey Ears 3.0, go to the uh, Shop Disney Parks app. And then uh, look for the Mickey ears, and uh, there's another tab called events. Click on that, and uh, your ears will light up and do different uh, things uh, during that show. If you don't have the Mickey ears, it displays like a little graphic uh, that kind of syncs up uh, with the show. Nice. Just something to do while you're watching, I guess. There's a report that Tokyo Disney is looking at adding an additional theme park not a I heard pet, about this I heard theme about this theme park <laughs> alright so a couple months ago I googled uh, uh, Google Earth I went and looked at uh, Tokyo uh, Disneyland they have a huge amount of empty space that they own that is just nothing and I'm like yeah they could definitely put in a new park and not have a problem mm-hmm so yeah, they they do, um, and you've been you've been to Tokyo. No, I've been oh, to you Tokyo, but not to the park. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I love I love Tokyo Disneyland. Right. Yeah, it, it's been what since two thousand nine, maybe two thousand eight. So it's been quite some time for me. Yeah. But I love Tokyo Disneyland, and yes, I mean they have <laughs> they have some space yeah. to to evolve. Yeah. I, I was kind of shocked because, I mean, land in, in Tokyo is gobbled up. Uh, and for them to kind of be hoarding this land, I, I was shocked that they have that much property. So right now, mm-hmm. Tokyo has their version of Magic Kingdom. Right. And they have... Disney Sea. Their Disney Sea, which is, you know, kind of a kind of a hodgepodge of different different right. things. Yeah. But I wonder mm-hmm. if they aren't going to have some type of 
you know, fantasy gate or, or gate, you know, devoted to, Mm. you know, Marvel, um, Marvel, Star Wars, and maybe even Studio Ghibli stuff. Mm. I was almost thinking, uh, you know, like a Pixar Marvel kind of, uh, theme park. Yeah. I mean, I I agree. You know, obviously there's a lot of room for Pixar there. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I wonder how they can tie it all in. Yeah. I wonder, you know, or if it's going to be like a, you know, dare I say islands of adventure type of thing where they have smaller themed lands in this one gated area. Right. Right. Uh, one gate. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out because they have a lot of IPs that they can play with there that's going to draw more people in. And as as we talked about earlier in the program, you, you said that um, or I, I mentioned the fact that they haven't really had these big updates to that park in many, many years. So they need to freshen up for all those locals that are there. And I would think that, you know, with all the the hubbub going on at, you know, in Hong Kong and in Shanghai. Yeah. Hong Kong is getting a massive expansion. Yeah. They're getting an expansion. So, you know, why not? You know, uh, the investors are the ones that have to really put up the money in order to make sure that that, that park gets updated. But it is a beautiful park. It's so clean, so immaculate. Yeah. So, be love to see, to see that. what happens. Waiting for the announcement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Disney Company just recently celebrated 60 years on the New York Stock Exchange. So, uh, mm. if you're a, a stockholder, yes, I am. You are. Uh, yep. Uh, it's been on the exchange for 60 years and still does well. Still, the only stock I own that pays a dividend every time. Every nice. time, I get my little. Uh, Dividend, thank you, uh, Disney, uh, for doing that. Nice. Uh, Disneyland in California has halted the sale of certain annual passes in an effort to aid in crowd control. Wow. <laughs> so. Wow. And it has begun, folks. Yeah. So I think it was their SoCal ticket, which uh, was only good for 200 days uh, out of the 365 is now not available for purchase. And one of the reasons stated for it is uh, they are expecting an onslaught for when Star Wars Land opens up, and they want to throttle back how many people have passes uh, to the park. It's going to be insane. Yeah. I, it is going to be insane. I, I would not – listen, I'm a betting man, and I am going to bet – that they're going to make pass holders make like reservations to get into this land. A lottery system. Yeah. That, uh, you know, because it's just going to be so busy with, you know, the public, uh, pass holders are really going to take, I think, a back seat to this, uh, uh, land. Now, Tony, were you there at the D23 when they unveiled the brand new, um, animatronic dragon for, the uh, uh, phantasmic. Yeah, I think I was. Because I, I think, I think we were all there. Yeah. For that. Right. And so after the D twenty three convention, I think we ended up going into the park. Uh, yes. Yeah. And was it not the most crazy time? I, I I've never been so claustrophobic. I'm not necessarily a claustrophobic person, I, but I'm like you and Kristen and everyone else probably listening to this podcast. I'm not a big fan of crowds. Yeah. I'm not a big fan. Yeah. And it was uncomfortably crowded. Yes. Just for Fantasmic. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, if somebody screams fire or gun, how am I getting out of here? Oh, my gosh. You went dark. <laughs> you so I'm went dark I, I have to leap, like, onto the top of a building across, I walk across rooftops because there's no way I'd be able to get down Main Street. Oh, I'm, I'm hightailing it to Club 33 for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me in. Let me in. Let me in. Let me in. <laughs> Somebody scream gun. I'll, I'll be inside that scene in the Haunted Mansion for sure, <laughs> downstairs with all the, the, <laughs> the dancing basement. ghosts. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. 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 Dancing ghosts. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean... It's it's going to be insane, and it doesn't surprise me. I think that if you've been following the news about Disneyland and the annual passes there and how it's kind of skyrocketed ever since uh, Cars Land was opened. Yeah. Well, and now well, the, the, the ticket for no restrictions is $1,100 a person. Yeah. 
I mean, that's crazy. No kidding. Yeah. I don't know. $1,100, I'd have to really it. think about it. <laughs> some people are going to pay it, and that's what their hopes. Yeah. You know, is this that you you have a, a demand, so you, you, you kind of decrease supply, and you increase cost. Right. And then hopefully you'll weed out all those people at some point, and, and I'm sure it's going to level out at some point. But Hopefully. <laughs> you know, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens. It'll be interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. So 88 million tourists visited Florida in the first nine months of 2017, setting a record. Were you one of them, Aldrin? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we were several of them, Tony. Yeah. You, me, and the crew. We, all right. We were we were that way. Um, You're part doesn't of surprise the problem, me. Then. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, part of the problem, part of Disney's solution of bringing uh, more stuff to the park. Apparently, yeah. you know. But the 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 more great stuff they bring to the park, you're going to see this happening. Yeah, you know, it's only going to increase. And you know, people are complaining about ticket prices being so dang high, but the fact of the matter is, people are still paying that premium price for that that ticket. Yeah. Yeah, I always say on the show, if you're mad at Disney about the crowds and your fast passes and having to wait on lines, you have to show them how mad you are with your wallet, not with your voice, because your voice just falls on deaf ears. But if you stop mm-hmm. paying for the damn ticket and stop buying the hotel room and attendance and uh, reservations go down, well, then Disney's going to perk up and listen. You know? Exactly. They won't have a choice at that point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I understand you have an addiction, but <laughs> you have to throttle back a little, folks. Throttle back. No kidding. You know. All right. Hey, the rumor mill is swirling about the Hall of Presidents possibly opening before the holidays. Wow. Wouldn't that be interesting? How long does the refurbishment usually take? Tony? Not this long. Not for not for adding a president. Typically, it's yeah. not that long. Yeah. This is the longest I've ever seen it. And. I don't think we're going to go on a political situation here because it's not the right place for it. But, right. you know, usually the refurbishment doesn't take but five months. Yeah. Maybe four or five months. Right, Tony? Yeah. I mean, they go, they take some measurements, they make a little wax thing, they make a mold, blah, 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 blah. Uh, They got, you know, they probably have a couple hundred animatronic people things in the back. They, you know, put the skin on and. Yeah. Boom, they're off to the races. I mean, it doesn't take that long. Now, maybe yeah, it's like doing, Bicentennial Man, you know? It's yeah, easy. Yeah, maybe they're doing <laughs> some other things in the attraction. You know, they could be updating audio and the visuals and stuff like that. But I think they did all that the last go-round. Uh, you know, the, the screen uh, got better. It you know became digital, I believe. Uh, they updated all the audio. I, you know, I don't know. Well, I, I imagine – that they they had to do a whole new show. Mm. They had to probably rewrite an entirely new script and have it voiced by someone that isn't Morgan Freeman. Right. Right? So I understand those things take time, but I don't think it's going to you know, take a year. I mean, we are sitting on a year, right? Yeah. So I don't, I don't know... I, I just think that no matter what what it is, I think that they deserve to. They they should open it. They should just you know make sure that it's it's up to date and, yeah. and open thing. You know, yeah. so just pull the trigger and do it. Do it. Just do it. Do it now. Do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Aljo, tell everybody where they can find uh, you and your wife, uh, Kristen. Absolutely. So be sure to check out um, WDW Tea Room. Uh, as a podcast, uh, we are uploading some of our greatest hits uh, podcast from over. Well, you see, it's a funny thing because we host a radio show on Sorcerer Radio. So, yes, you can listen to Sorcerer Radio at srsounds.com. It's been the longest running fan run radio station on the Internet. Yep. Uh, so thank you for, for your listeners and, and you guys for being a part of our success for, for many over Gosh, 16, almost 17 years now. Wow. So it's it's been a long time. Tiki Room has been around since um, 09. So uh, it's 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 been a long time. So you get to hear all of our uh, subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and different places. Um, 
and hear all of our interviews that we've had throughout time. Um, this past year has been kind of uh, interesting because of the different work schedules that my wife and I have. So we are putting some best of shows together, okay. but be sure you uh, download that. Uh, Kristen's also the host and I'm the producer of uh, Dining at Disney. So if you check out the Dining at Disney website, it is updated uh, with new articles and reviews uh, every week and news about food uh, from across Disneyland and Walt Disney World Resorts. And the podcast is hosted by Kristen and our food correspondent, Big Bubba B, who's also no stranger to this podcast. Yep. Yep. So you get to check that out as well. And um, I guess if you want to follow us on Instagram, WDW Tiki Room, um, on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Dining at Disney for Kristen. Her Instagram's uh, awesome. And then you can check out JediMouseketeer.com and uh, check out all my social media there as well. If you love music, if you love pop culture, you'll definitely like to check that out. So thanks for having me, Tony. You're a busy, busy okay. man, my friend. Um, yeah, very busy. And I'd like to do more podcasting, but it, it is busy. So thank yeah. you so much for having us on the show. And oh, yeah, and and, and, and don't forget to check out uh, Source Radio at srsounds.com. Uh, we were lucky enough to to be there with you guys for your um, really nice meetup at the oh, Bungle, yeah. Yeah. which was great. It's always great to see and, and hear from all the great Disney Parks podcast listeners that, that happen to also be Source Radio listeners. So yeah, that's, that's really cool. That's yeah. Good. And, uh, hey, if you want to come see him, he's going to be here uh, for the Monorail Coral uh, this Saturday at 7 p.m. So. Yeah, Chris and I are going to have a good time with you guys and the rest of your listeners. As always, always a great time to hang out with you guys. We're a crazy bunch of people. Love it. Yeah. All right. Hey, that's it for uh, this week. Uh, we want to thank you for listening. Uh, go visit us at DisneyParksPodcast.com and on the Facebook at Facebook.com, uh, Disney Parks Podcast. And as we'd like to say around here, kids. We'll see you in the parks. Have you ever come to Orlando and you're the person that has to make all the dining plans, all the fast passes, get all the tickets? Well, we have a service that can help you do this. This is the best service. They are themeparkconcierge.com. You can call them up at 407-257-9973. Tell them your plans. They'll send you a little profile, get some information about you and your traveling party, what you want to do, what you don't want to do, and then they can set up a custom plan for you. And they'll take you around the parks. They'll make the dining plans. They'll get the fast passes. They'll take you to... Walt Disney World. They'll take you to Universal. They'll take you to Busch Gardens, to SeaWorld, to Legoland, to all of those places, and they will do all of the work for you. Contact them at themeparkconcierge.com. Check them out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Ramon VIP Concierge or email them at Ramon at themeparkconcierge.com. I am telling you, you will not be disappointed. And if you tell them the Disney Parks Podcast sent you, you'll get 10% off your order. The Disney Parks Podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. All Disney Parks, attractions, lands, shows, event names, etc. are registered trademarks of the Walt Disney Company. Like a boat out of the blue Eight steps in and sees you through.